And next up we have Watcher's Test, a Little Bitty Saga Life in Exile, book number one, written by Sean Oswalt. It is 654 pages, $2.99. It is available on Kindle Unlimited. Here's the author's description. This isn't a game. This is his new life. Dave has been wandering through life for a long time. His day job bores him, and he never seems to be able to meet his family's expectations. The only escape he's ever had is his love of MMORPGs. But when he becomes the subject of a test without even knowing it, he's portaled into a game world called Loloria with no way out. It's a frequent daydream of his. However, in none of his dreams did his wife and daughter, and two other kids, I should say, um, ever accompany him. Now Dave wants balance protecting his family with exploring his dream, oh, and trying to stay alive. Monstrous beasts roam Loloria, worst of all, an undead army led by the vile Death Knight. He'll have to adapt fast and learn to cooperate if he hopes to make it a new home for his family. And just maybe along the way, he'll find out why they're living a life in exile. So there we go. Um, this is a multi-narrative story with a primary focus on a family that is transported to an RPG world. Um, the beginning of this novel is probably the hardest, at least for me, to get through. Um, and, and it's mostly because of the family dynamics. The family dynamics in the story... Um, are a little bit broken and there's a ton of penny arguing between these different characters. Um, and I found it frankly annoying and I almost put it on the book. Um, and I'm not the only one who kind of felt this way. If you read some of the other Amazon reviews for the story, well, the majority of them are like really super positive. You could tell that there's a certain uh, percentage of readers who were like, who couldn't get past this section of the novel because they have found this family set up a little bit um, annoying. Um, and I absolutely understand that, uh, but I'm, I'm someone who kind of pushes through things to see if it gets better, and it does, it really does. Um, there are also multiple narratives in the story um, that don't really connect and, uh, and tie up until like the very end of the story, like the last 10, 15% of the novel. Um, and when they do connect finally, it's really good, but up until then, they kind of just feel like they exist as backstories or as, uh, as, as storylines that may or may not eat eventually like be fulfilled in the point um but they, they do twine in so just if they're not super interested immediately it, it, that's pretty fine um the main storyline is sort of a kind of a messy rpg swiss family robinson kind of storyline at least up until like 50 percent end of the story um with the family of five being sent to an rpg world where they have to fight monsters and survive long enough to figure out the rules there again are some annoying family dynamics petty arguments amongst the five uh but by the middle of the story those are pretty well phased out as the family adjusts and and kind of have to depend on each other more serve for survival um though only three of the family members the husband the wife and the teen daughter are really focused on in this particular story um and and the only ones who really do any fighting or leveling the other two members of, of, of the family are um preteen um, one pretty young, and they kind of feel like they exist just uh, to be put in danger, to be saved. Excuse me. Um, but like I said, that, that's kind of the storyline. Um, it's a storyline really, for the most part. It's kind of slice of life for that main storyline. But again, there are these um, secondary narrative chapters uh, that kind of give you a look into the world building, the story, um, other factions in the world, other like. Uh, villain perspectives that I thought were interesting, but again, they weren't as interesting in the main focus. Um, so there you go. Like on the game mechanic side of things, um, most of the game mechanics come through really well. Um, there's a really good balance between RPG notifications and stuff, um, and realism to combat. There are definitely some, a few one way moments in the story, but include like, um, the healer mom gaining several seven levels um from choosing a class um and there are obvious there, there are some very obvious uh power leveling in some of the fights and some miraculous saves but if outside of those few places the game mechanics are followed fairly faithfully and with levels meaning something so like for the most part if the family is out leveled by a monster they run away um or like somebody's severely hurt um and, and they still can't can't win um if they're numbered to a like, huge degree maybe people with the same level they they also don't win so they, they kind of run away and i like that uh, kind of realistic aspect of the story where um Yes, you could fight something that's more powerful than you, but you're kind of taking your life in your own hands. And if you're not prepared and, you know, you're not set um, with like a like a super good plan or, you know, there are the weaknesses, you're going to die or you're going to like lose severely. Um, so 
that's also about balance with like some of the gamer stuff or like um zone pulling was something on the story that i thought was like oh that's that's kind of a neat little like twist on an old mmorpg like kind of trick um the multiple effects on the, on the story again did a good amount of world being they showed up various factions in the kingdom of the world um but some of the time they felt again unpurposeful i want to say or they didn't like i said um I didn't really care for all of them. And that, that's per, per, a personal thing. I also don't like the multiple perspectives in Game of Thrones, um, the novels. And that was really hard for me to get to that series or even through the first book. But again, if that's not an issue for you, you're going to enjoy this a, lot, a, a bit more than me. Um, and up until like the very end of the story where all those pieces kind of, or some of those pieces kind of reconnected with the main story arc for the, for the, for the, for the family, um, they felt distant. They felt like, why are these existing here? Um, but again, the payoff at the very end of the story is, is definitely worth it. Um, definitely kicked up a notch for me. Um, overall, the story was good, especially the last 15% of the story where things, again, tie up together. Um, there were only a few issues that kept this being great for me, um, but it was still really, really good. Um, and it gives a score of 7.8 out of 10. That's Watcher's Test, a lit RPG saga, Life in Exile, with a nearly great review score um, with a 7.8 out of 10. So there you go.